Today is August the 23rd. Today we see that the end is the beginning. Our scripture reading for today is Mark chapters 14 to 16. Here in this passage, uh, we move very quickly between a long series of events. Uh, the first uh, several verses of chapter 14, a woman comes to anoint Jesus, and Jesus in verse 8 says, She's anointing me for my burial. Why would a living man talk about his burial? It's because Jesus knows what's about to happen. From there, we move to the Last Supper, where Jesus announces that he will indeed die. He moves to Gethsemane, takes Peter, James, and John with him deep in Gethsemane, where he prays to the Father and asks if there's any other way. He gets his answer, no, there's not. And so he resigns himself to his own fate. We have the betrayal and the denial, the trial of Jesus, then the condemnation of Jesus. Uh, the trial, in the trial, he was found guilty of Jewish law, but the condemnation is a Roman condemnation, condemnation because the Jews couldn't condemn a man to death. Rome could. And so Pontius Pilate does. We have the crucifixion of Jesus followed by the burial. But then in chapter 16, we get the resurrection. Now, if you have a more modern version of the Bible, what you will see, my version, for example, the first eight verses end with uh, Jesus speaking to the woman at the tomb, women at the tomb. But they don't say anything because they're frightened end. Then I have a shorter ending and then a longer ending. Both shorter and longer endings don't occur in any of our texts until about the 5th century, 5th and 6th century. So what happened? There are two possibilities. One is that Mark intended to end the gospel that way. He intended to end the gospel with the note of fear and those who didn't want to share Jesus, to spur those who are reading the gospel on to actually sharing Jesus. Another possibility is that the original ending of Mark was lost. The truth is, we have no idea what happened. The endings that we currently have are later editions. Now, both of them simply quote from other passages of Scripture, so that's okay. But uh, we really don't know how the Gospel of Mark ended originally. Today, reading the Gospel of Mark, we can bring our own ending to the Gospel of Mark. Share the story of Jesus. Mark 14 through 16, New Living Translation, Mark 14. It was now two days before Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the leading priest and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him, but not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany, at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. A woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head, some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed.
Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests to arrange to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come, and they promised to give him money. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go to prepare the Passover meal for you? So Jesus sent two of them into Jerusalem with these instructions, As you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. So the two disciples went into the city and found everything, just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. In the evening Jesus arrived with the twelve. As they were at the table eating, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you eating with me here will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, Am I the one? He replied, It is one of you twelve who is eating from the bowl with me, for the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible will it be for the one who betrays him? It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. On the way, Jesus told them, All of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter said to him, Even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter, this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, Peter declared empathetically, even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and fell to the ground. He prayed that, if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass by him. Abba, Father, he cried, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found his disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest, but know the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with a crowd of men with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and teachers of religious law and the elders. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out a sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why don't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Then all the disciples deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. 
They took Jesus to the high priest's home, where the leading priest, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priest and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands. Then in three days I will build another made without human hands. But even then, they didn't get the story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, Why do we need other witnesses? You have all heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fist. Prophesy to us, they jeered, and the guards slapped him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, You were one of those with Jesus of Nazareth, but Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. Just then, a rooster crowed. When the servant girl saw him standing there, he began telling the others, This man is definitely one of them, but Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, You must be one of them, because you are a Galilean. Peter swore, A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man you are talking about. And immediately, the rooster crowed the second time. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he broke down and wept. Mark 15 Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law, the entire high council, met to discuss their next steps. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You have said it. Then the leading priest kept accusing him of many crimes, and Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner, anyone the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had committed murder in an uprising. The crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he realized by now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus out of envy. But at this point the leading priest stirred up the crowd and demanded the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. Pilate asked them, Then what should I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Why? Pilate demanded. What crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, Crucify him! So to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters, called the Praetorium, and called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe, and they wove thorned branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and touted, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees in mock worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. A passerby named Simon, who was from Cyrene, was coming in from the countryside just then, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus, and they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They offered him wine drugged with myrrh, but he refused it. Then the soldiers nailed him to the cross. 
They divided his clothes and threw dice to decide who would get each piece. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. A sign announced the charge against him. It read, The King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Ha! <laughs> Look at you now, they yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well, then save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests and teachers of religious law also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't even save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down from the cross so we can see it and believe him. Even the men who were crucified with Jesus ridiculed him. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. This all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, as everything approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate to ask for Jesus' body. Joseph was an honored member of the high council and was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was already dead, so he called for the Roman officers and asked if he had died yet. The officers confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph he could have the body. Joseph brought along a sheet of linen cloth then he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where Jesus' body was laid. Mark 16 Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we will sing a sad song.